Dr. K. S. Muhammad. Dr. Muhammad is principal scientist at the CMFRI, Kochi, and is head of the Molluscan Fisheries Division of the Institute. His research interests include mollusk fisheries and aquaculture, trophic modeling, and tropical fisheries management. He has contributed to the growth of commercial bivalve mariculture in the country. Recently, he was also appointed as the member of the Technical Advisory Board of the Marine Stewardship Council. He has published more than 200 research articles in international and national journals. First, I would like to thank the organizers of BRACON for giving me this opportunity to present before you. Uh, I will just uh, uh, go through what I will be talking about, the ecosystem approach to aquaculture, the background of it, how much of ecosystem approach is practiced in India and uh, issues of carrying capacity which is a key factor and also on IMTA which Dr. Amir Navuri just now talked about and also a little bit on ecological modeling uh, uh, in aquaculture. So I think this is a well-established fact, is one of the aquaculture is the fastest growing food sector in the world and contributes nearly 50% of about half of the food fish globally. Uh, we also know the uh, very fast population uh, growth rate, global population is expected to reach nearly 10 billion by 2050. And uh, wild harvest fisheries are not going to answer this uh, because we already have uh, a lot of uh, fish stocks which are overfished or fully fished and it's only aquaculture which can uh, bridge this gap. And we also know that uh, aquaculture production is highly resource efficient. Uh, you can see here a comparison uh, on uh, various um, uh, for example, fish, chicken, uh, pig, and uh, uh, beef. And you can see that uh, uh, the fish outperforms uh, all other production systems, but uh, uh, including food conversion ratio, uh, edible meat percentage, protein retention, and energy retention. But this also gives a false sense of ecological well-being because we know that many of our practices, uh, aquaculture practices, are not that ecologically friendly or environment friendly. And we have several issues uh, now cropping up in aquaculture because aquaculture produces waste in forms of fecal matter and unused feed. And these are largely nitrogenous waste, cause oxygen depletion in coastal environment and a net loss of marine productivity in coastal areas. Is also, aquaculture is also one of the largest causes for occurrence of foreign species introduced into new areas, which uh, later becomes a threat to the indigenous uh, fauna or flora. And because farm fish uh, need a food source, other wild species are at risk of being overfished for the manufacture of fish food. Uh, also, aquaculture can spread parasites and diseases in the wild. So, uh, I think we have a number of examples for this. And chemicals uh, such as antibiotics and water treatment agents are also commonly used and uh, the system, whole system now needs to be closed or the wastewater treated before uh, discharge. So, these are uh, some of the issues that are there in the aquaculture industry and as intensification uh, happens, the, all these issues crop up. And this is how the genesis of the ecosystem ap approach to aquaculture came about uh, and it was mooted by the FAO. And the growth of the aquaculture sector worldwide and interaction of aquaculture activities with other economic sectors, natural resource users require a responsible and integrated approach as outlined in Article 9 of the CCRF. 
And in 2006, uh, FAO and a number of other global experts came to uh, moot a concept known as the ecosystem approach to aquaculture. The strat basic strategy is of integration of all activities in the wider ecosystem such that it promotes uh, sustainable development, equity and resilience of interlinked social ecological systems and is guided by three strategic principles. Development and management should take into account the full range of ecosystem function services and should not threaten the sustained delivery of these to the society. Uh, we cannot view aquaculture in isolation. Uh, we have to take the whole ecosystem uh, into account. And aquaculture should improve human well-being and equity of all relevant stakeholders. Uh, I think today morning uh, there was a discussion on mangrove, I think a presentation on mangrove uh, ecosystem and how livelihoods can be improved even though mangroves sometimes impact livelihoods. So uh, all these ecosystems should be, uh, all the players in the ecosystem should be taken into consideration. And aquaculture should be developed in the context of other sectors, policies, goals as appropriate. So uh, what is looked upon is an integrated and holistic approach rather than a, a closed uh, approach as is currently being practiced. And here the concept of carrying capacity uh, is of primary importance uh, because we know that any aquatic water body has limits on the amount of animals and plants that it can hold. And aquaculture, because uh, it is a system by which you are introducing a, a plant or animal into the system, uh, you have to work out on the, on the how, how much it can accommodate all these new systems. So initially, carrying capacity was defined as the maximum standing stocks that can be kept within a particular ecosystem to maximize production without negatively affecting growth rate. But now it's redefined as taking the larger perspective that the amount of change that a process or variable may suffer within a particular ecosystem without driving the structure and function of the ecosystem beyond certain acceptable limits. So uh, always in, in, in any production system, excess uh, of production can lead to problems. Uh, we all know that. And some of the important parameters that need to be taken into account is uh, the physical side, the environmental and ecological issues, and the, of course the society as a whole. So carrying capacity is a very important concept and there are uh, at least four types of carrying capacity which needs to be looked at. The physical carrying capacity, the social carrying capacity, ecological and the production carrying capacity. And we know that in Asia, most of our aquaculture system, farm sizes are small. And usually we think that a small farm size does not impact the ecosystem. But when there are a number of small farms, they together can affect the, uh, impact the ecosystem and it needs to be assessed as a whole. And that's known as a strategic environmental assessment. And also to ensure that some of the small farms will not exceed the uh, total ecological carrying capacity. Uh, earlier, the earlier speaker, Dr. No uh, Amir Nawari, was talking about why India is not uh, doing anything on an integrated uh, holistic approach like IMTA. Uh, uh, of course, India has been slow to start off and has been concentrating on production, basically. But also, India is the second largest aquaculture producer in the, uh, in the world, and the concept is yet to be fully integrated into the policies and management systems. But a recent draft national mariculture policy indicates the need to align the development of mariculture in the country with the ecosystem approach. And very often, uh, uncontrolled boom of aquaculture practice in the country has resulted in ecological catastrophes like the black tiger shrimp farming failure due to viral disease outbreaks, issues of carrying capacity and protozoan diseases in the fledging uh, marine mussel farming sector. 
So, uh, uh, if we don't, we don't take a proactive step uh, and move the culture systems into an integrated and holistic approach, we are very likely to fo follow a boom and bust kind of uh, situation. And scientific management practices with due consideration of ecological carrying capacity would ha ha really have helped to prevent such catastrophes. I, as an example, I'll just uh, take you through the crisis in the muscle farming sector in Kerala. You can see from the graph that there has been a tremendous increase in production of mussels by farming in Kerala, mainly in the northern districts. Uh, and you can see that very quickly, within about a span of six, seven years, production reached up to 20,000 tons. And then uh, uh, very soon it slipped uh, and reached a very low production figure within about another five to six years. And you can see in the map uh, uh, a Google picture of uh, the estuarine Estura system in Kasargod district where a number of rack farms have been built and the number actually has uh, uh, I mean increased so much that it lead to, led to this catastrophe. So if you look at the genesis, the, initially there's a growth in farming and since farmers were dependent on wild seeds, a seed became a constraint and then <clears throat> the seeds were sourced from distant locations. The poor seed quality and seeds uh, became an issue and seeds became susceptible to stress. They, and then the excessive number of farms led to habitat degradation, also led to poor flushing. Uh, there was a bun construction in that particular estuary which led to poor water exchange. And in 2016 and 17, there were climate issues, 15 and 16, with very high temperatures prevailing. And this compounded stress to muscle stock led to standard growth, and also uh, increased prevalence of the uh, protozoan parasite Perkinsis olseni. You can see from the small bar chart there, uh, whereas initially it was just about 20%, by 2016-17, uh, Perkins' Oliseni was present in 100% of the mussels. And it led to severe massive mortality of the mussel farms, mussel production declined, financial loss to farmers. Uh, finally, uh, CMFRA uh, gave an advisory on how best to manage the situation. Uh, but of course, uh, the, by hindsight, we say that initial management practices of the uh, state were not uh, adequate. So uh, it, uh, CMFRA advised on best aquaculture practice for mussels uh, with a series of 21 recommendations. It advised on wild uh, seed sourcing protocols, seed quality assessment tests, registration and licensing of farms, uh, limitation by about 20% of the number of farms in the area based on the carrying capacity shifting farm sites every alternate year because it does affect the benthic uh, fauna and modification of buns for better flushing uh, and of course hatchery seeds to be made available uh, seed quality is an issue and farming site classification based on the European Union criteria. So uh, uh, all these things happened only after the crisis developed. I think. India is still to learn from taking proactive steps in every case. In the, in the black tiger uh, production system also, uh, it is only after the crisis hit that we were able to take a management system. Uh, and of course, uh, with regard to IMTA, I think already Dr. Navori has already explained a lot of things on the IMTA system, on how each trophic level uh, or e the waste of one production system can be used by organic uh, shellfish or inorganic uh, seaweeds and also the depo deposit extractive uh, organisms like sea cucumbers or clams. So uh, uh, this is a, again, uh, this fits into the eco e ecosystem approach to aquaculture. So uh, IMTA must be viewed as uh, something which needs to be promoted and taken up on a larger scale. 
there are some examples of IMTA from India where uh, fish cobia in cage and seaweed capophycus in rafts were done together. It enhanced the production of both improved sediment characteristics and carbon sequestration. Uh, the seaweed production uh, more than doubled uh, with IMTA uh, and the uh, average carbon, uh, I mean the total amount of carbon sequestered also doubled. So seaweed definitely is uh, a, an organism of the future uh, uh, and uh, a lot of the problems that we have in our aquaculture systems can definitely be solved through seaweed integration. Another example is fish atroplus in cage and oyster uh, crassostria in wrens. Uh, again, uh, this is in a uh, brackish water environment. And again, it uh, improved the production of both. Uh, and oysters improve water quality uh, in, uh, by filtering large quantities of particula POM, particulate matter. Uh, also, it improved uh, uh, several other uh, oxygen dissolved nitrogen, phosphorus concentrations, and uh, also it worked to as a benthic pelagic coupling system of nutrient cycling, uh, releasing it as phosphate into the water, thereby increasing uh, the phosphate content. So uh, there are good examples of IMTA in India, but it needs to be promoted and taken up on a larger scale. Another uh, tool that can be used is to model these kind of things is ecological modeling. And uh, some of the model modules like EcoPath, EcoWind 2000 uh, uh, can model energy flows uh, and can help identify problems in the system and energy wastage. Uh, also, uh, environmental effects model like farm or uh, eutrophication screening model like asset are some of the other tools available. It can help make management decisions in sustainable aquaculture operations, but it does require more data uh, and many of these uh, data are already available. Uh, many of the research institutions already collect this data, but we are unable to use it in a proper way. And this is the change that research institutions have to make in order to uh, come up with better management decisions. Uh, this, for example, is the ECOWIN 2000 results for phytoplankton mass balance in an estuary in France. And this is a kind of a box model uh, with input and output. Uh, it models how much of input and output is there. So uh, it, 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 for example, showed that uh, the maximum muscle production in that particular estuary uh, could be increased by 2.3 times the present production. Uh, uh, but the model indicates need for longer growth cycles to achieve harvestable weights. Other uh, model, models like EcoPath can also be used to, uh, for example, again in Kerala, in a, uh, a, a study was made in three different types of shrimp farming systems, extensive, modified extensive, where shrimp and fish were stocked together, and a polyculture system where mussels were also used and uh, ecological modeling can help to uh, look at how the detritus is formed, how much of the detritus can be used up by uh, other organisms. So modeling is found, uh, it, it was found that introduction of muscles could bring about better stability to the system and there was high, as there were high variation in other ecosystem indices in the uh, traditional system. So, Another aspect tool that can be used is the use of GIS and MSP or marine spatial planning. And these such kind of, because uh, our ecosystems are, um, have multi uses, there are so many things happening in the aquatic ecosystem and all these things need to be integrated in order to uh, uh, really manage the ecosystem based on the ecosystem approach. Uh, you can see on the right uh, the picture where we have done a look at, we have done a GIS mapping of mussel farms in uh, North Kerala and how we were able to reduce the number of farms, advise on a reduced reduction of mussel farms. So the future uh, is about ecological problems are bound to increase with intensification of aquaculture and the ecosystem approach can help to make better decisions in aquaculture operations and the use of GIS and marine spatial planning 
our in inherent tools, part of the EA tools, and there's need for more location-specific and condition-specific research work to demonstrate EAA principles. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you very much.